I love you. On to a legendary literary character that we all love today. Everybody. Everybody. Welcome back, Couch Potatoes. This is Green and Faceless on the Couch. I'm the Green Traveler. And I'm the Faceless Leon. And uh, I proposed to Blake um, recently. A, a new movie came out called Anola Holmes on Netflix. And we haven't been able to see many 2020 f- films this year, or at least films that were meant to come out in 2020. And so yeah. I wanted to see Anola Holmes, but I didn't really know how we could you know, pitch that for a podcast. Like, I'm down to do a 30-minute podcast, but I don't really know if we can get 30 minutes out of Enola. We'll find out. Uh, yeah. Um, but I, I realized that, you know, recently we've had three uh, Sherlock Holmes uh, interpretations. interpretations. Adaptations. Uh, adaptations, yeah. Um, installations. Installations. <laughs> <laughs> Reverberations. <laughs> um, but they've all, all the three Sherlock Holmes have been played by actors who have played other famous characters. Yeah. So I thought, it, you know, I thought it'd be fun to do a threesome on Sherlock where he's been played by Iron Man, Superman, and Gandalf. Good old Gandalf. Good old Gandalf. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're talking. I, I was excited about it too, uh, after we talked about it. Um, just to, because honestly, the all three of them are great actors i don't think we can deny that um we haven't i i gotta say i'm not a big fan of the superman movies really these recent ones no but henry Um, cavill is amazing henry cavill is very good yeah um so yeah there i think these are the three most recent interpretations if we don't count the um cumberbatch uh tv show yeah, or the elementary TV show. Oh yeah, if we're not counting TV, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or series, the these are the uh, most recent interpretations of Sherlock well, Holmes. There's, there's also oh, we have damn to it, mention. I forgot about that. Yeah, we have to mention. We, we're like deliberately <laughs> ignoring it, but there's also <laughs> the the Will Ferrell and uh, what's his face, uh, John C. Riley, who John C. I, Riley. I, I adore I love John both, C. Yeah. Riley. I do yeah. love him. Um, I mean, I don't hate Will Ferrell. I hate some of his comedy. Um, yeah. But, you know, I've, I've liked some of his movies, um, and I think he's a good person. Yeah, but he can act, for sure. Like I have, but I have seen five minutes of that movie, <laughs> and I don't want to see that movie. <laughs> it was enough. Five minutes yeah. were enough, huh? It, yeah, that was enough for me to be like, maybe we'll do it if we do, like, a, a shit threesome. Uh, you know, a shitty threesome. <laughs> yeah, a shit threesome. Uh, oh, um, yeah, speaking of, uh, this is a podcast. It's mm. about movies. Um, uh, there may be spoilers ahead, but we'll, we'll let you know if we're about to go too deep. And um, hopefully we don't give anything away that'll make you not want to watch the movie. Uh, and beyond that, um, we're going to talk about our everyday lives, which includes current events and um, sometimes uh, corona sneaks in there but that is definitely not our focus so uh we hope you enjoy we're talking about sherlock holmes sherlock holmes and uh, i think it's okay to start with the most recent adaptation of enola yeah. holmes so you want to want to take it away on enola holmes yeah so enola holmes uh Sherlock and Minecraft, uh, Mycroft, Mycroft, Mycroft. Um, they, um, they're a bit older than their youngest sister, Anola, hmm. and she's at home raised with her mother. And one day, she, her mother's not there anymore. She becomes Mycroft's ward. That's kind of the premise. That that's yeah. what starts it off. There's a lot more to this movie, uh, obviously. It's also, um, also like. Mycroft and Sherlock are kind of distant, like really distant from their uh, younger sister. Like they don't right. even recognize her when they see her. No, no. I think uh, she was like three the last time that Sherlock saw her. Yeah, her mother. Like yeah, her mother, played by Helena Bottom Carter, uh, raises her kind of outside of society. So like Anola is very, right. very awkwardly 
uh you know she, she's very awkward socially and like she has to learn once she's in society how to act that kind of stuff yeah i don't know that she's so um i i i, I don't know that she's so awkward i feel like she's pretty willing to be in the co- in a conversation and stuff like that i think it's more of she's uh abrasive to the societal norms especially yeah. for mycroft mycroft is a dick in this movie yeah i, I guess you're right she's not awkward socially she's yeah. awkward in social situations that's, right that's because, what i meant to yeah. say she's not socialized as they used to say yeah yeah especially with her dress uh there's a lot of focus from Mycroft on how she's like dirty, how she's not dressed well. Um, I will say, I mean, that's pretty, pretty good synopsis is her mom disappears. And that's kind of like, right. Her quest is to figure out what happened to her mom. Right. Uh, while being under this new control of her brother. And I'll say, I don't like their interpretation of Mycroft at all. No, he is, he is a big old meanie. Um, Sam, Sam Clay Claffin, like Claflin, I'm sorry, Sam. Um, Sam he, I will not say he did a poor job. He played a man of the period. Um, Mm -hmm. but he's definitely super anti-feminist in this movie. Um, and very selfish character. Yeah. And another thing too is it's like okay i should say before we get further into any of these movies that sherlock holmes is one of my favorite literary characters Mm. like easily in the top 10 i read his stories when i you know uh, sir arthur conan doyle stories when i was a little kid um i read the illustrated ones they weren't actually you know like they were edited (laughs) edited to be more approachable for young children um but when i got into uh, you know upper elementary school grades i was reading them again through the actual classic version and like i just fell in love with you know arthur conan doyle like tells just an amazing mystery tale like even for the time period they were written in they're still easily readable today i mean they're a little dry little dry very heavy on exposition because it's all sherlock holmes deducting things you know it's right. what you see in the movie is kind of what the story is you know it's like he he sees something one tiny detail and he can tell like a whole month to a life's worth of information out of it yeah and i mean it can be hard to read it sometimes because it is you know aged but they're still really enjoyable and like i love it and so that said i you know I can accept that when you're adapting stuff, you do change details and everything. Right. But a lot of adaptations of Sherlock Holmes refuse to make Mycroft a fat government man. And I want yeah. a fat government man. <laughs> um, I feel like what well, we didn't, we're not talking about this particular movie, but I think Stephen Fry was a pretty good interpretation. Yeah. yeah we talk, um, we're going to talk Sherlock Holmes, the first one. But the the sequel to that one, uh, Game and Chat, Game of Shadows, has Stephen Fry, and that's the perfect, in my opinion, it is the perfect interpretation. I think his Mycroft could be a little angrier and meaner because he is kind of a mean, ignorant, you know, government bastard at times. Uh, but in the guy in the, Ritchie in the movie? stories, in the stories, yeah, yeah, and the Stephen oh, in the Fry. stories, okay. Uh, I'm saying that in the Guy Ritchie movie, Stephen Fry's Mycroft could be angrier. Could be, yeah. But as a physical interpretation, it's great, Mycroft. Yeah. And here, here we do have the personality, kind of what I remember in the stories. Like it's still off a bit, but he's he's much meaner here. Um, but again, he's just like this handsome, straight up government dude. And I'm just like, yeah, just make him a just make him a big fat guy. Like, yeah, yeah. why not? It's I do just... think that I do think that both Sherlock and Mycroft are supposed to be um, a little bit younger than their typical uh, mm-hmm. interpretation. So maybe it's supposed to be before Mycroft gets fat, but he, he could be fatter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, even, even the uh, Benedict Cumberbatch Sherlock TV show, like, yeah, their he's Mycroft very thin is, in that. is very thin, but they do an episode where it's all told in like the 1800s, and that version of their Mycroft is fat. 
because huh. rich people back then were fat. Yeah, that was they ate that was food. just yeah. The I mean, well, <laughs> well, that was you know that was a sign of wealth was if you were fat, it meant you can get food. Right. <laughs> you know, it's like especially in that time period in that area, like the rich were fat. It just makes sense. Very true. Very true. Um. So I would say that the period of this piece of Vanilla Holmes just kind of feels off because like I don't really see it as a period film in any way. I don't really right. know if there is a specific period it's set in. Um, uh, I mean, it's definitely, um, it's definitely not the twentieth century. Um, I would say it's supposed to be. De- it's trying to depict the late eighteenth century where yeah, the stories are have- actually based, but. I think they still uh, have horse and buggy in the in the movie. They do, but they also still have. Uh, oh yeah, they had the, a couple the... of automobiles, some early automobiles, like driven on a stick. Um, yeah, because there was that one. Which lady was that was fun. Her, yeah, that one lady had her one car kind of thing. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. My automobile. <laughs> My automobile. <laughs> I will say this is a, it is a fun movie. Um, yeah, I do. Fun. I do. It's good. It's great for kids too. Um, oh yeah that's definitely more the directed audience um Mm -hmm. than the other two movies for sure yeah i will say that this was originally meant for theaters but because of all the mayhem going on in the world today they put it off to netflix instead and i like that better i think it works better in netflix i feel like if i had paid yeah 10 to 20 dollars for this in the theaters i kind of would have been pissed yeah Um, i think so too because i i it didn't necessarily look like a children's movie from the trailer, mm-hmm. but it really kind of plays off that way. Yeah. Um, it's when a I, good kids movie. I'll say that. Yeah, it is good. Even just the good teens, you know, it's good yeah. for teenagers, I'd say. Um, especially casting, you know, Millie Bobby Brown from she was, Things. She was great, I thought. She's, yeah, she kills it. She's, you know, she's always fun. Um, I don't like the constant fourth wall breaking thing. Yeah, I thought I, if it was done uh, a a fourth as much, it would have been better. Yeah, they did it a lot, and like they utilize it, it really well. Yeah, like it's you know there's it's always useful. a smart a smart um, aspect to it, but it's just they did it so fucking much, and I was like, there's yeah. a moment where I was like near the end, I was like, and she's gonna break the wall. Now she does. Okay. Yep. And yeah, it was very it predictable. Here. You know, it's just like, all right, you know, they they just fell back on it so fucking much. Yeah, they could have done it like six times and it would have been way better. Mm -hmm. Um, And maybe that's, you know, maybe they're, I haven't read the book that it's based off of. Uh, It's based off a novel by Nancy Springer. Uh, Yeah, Um, she's got a whole series, I guess. Yeah, that was the other thing I was thinking with this movie is I wish it was a TV show. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Yeah, it feels like they can make a good TV show out of this, especially with and Millie Bobby Brown in that That's role, what I know. was just about to say. She would, yeah, just cast her again and do the TV yeah. show. It's like, I think they're only going to do this next season of Stranger Things, and then she's going to need some project. Oh, are they? Are they doing Stranger Things? I thought they were done for some reason. They got one last season that's, I think it's already been filmed, and it's about to come out. Wow, um, okay. Don't hold me to my, that, though. I don't really, I haven't looked into it for a while. I just remember they put out that trailer where it's. I'm oh, not gonna I spoil didn't Stranger it. Things. I, I didn't catch spoil. it. Yeah, we're not talking about. It. Maybe someday. <laughs> yeah, um, but I do wish that they made this a TV show because it feels like two movies packed into each other, and it's a two-hour-long movie. And I gotta say, I wish it was shaved. I wish they had given it like an hour and twenty, yeah. especially for being on Netflix. Like, uh, yeah, it ended three different times. It has a Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. syndrome a little bit. Yeah. Um, well, it's also because they they're ending their subplots, and it's like each subplot is important enough to be its own movie. Right. Yeah. It's all kind so, of mixed together, and I don't know if like maybe they took a couple of her novels and mixed them or something like that. But no, it did definitely feel that way. Um, yeah. It. It's you know. The, it kind of the adventure of the Marquis and the Marquise or whatever. They call. Yes. Um. I was trying to look that up. What What the actual title of the book was. Um the case of the missing marquise that's okay. what it is and um the the and marquise like is a similar age as enola uh, and they mm. they constantly bump into each other and i and enjoyed that of, i thought that was a that lot was of fun. fun 
Yeah. That's a, that's a fun story plot. The story plot between her and her brothers, Sherlock and Mycroft, is fun. Yeah. Um, you know, again, even though I don't like their the look of their Mycroft, the guy who's playing him, uh, what did you say his name was? Sam Cap Claflin? Um, yeah, Claflin. He's great. You know, he oh. does a good job. I really liked Henry Cavill as Sherlock. Um, he's not as rambunctious and no, bohemian. He's very as, subdued. Yeah, yeah. It's like RDJ takes the the character and makes him more bohemian and crazy. Um, it, but as you said here, he's very subdued, but he still has all of that um, personality that makes the literary Sherlock very enjoyable. Uh, I should say I yeah. remembered we came back from a game of shadows and we were talking with one of our roommates about it and he hated it. And he was saying like, I'm tired of this blockbustery Sherlock, you know, it's stupid. He's too action heavy. And I'm saying, I've read the books. He is an action hero in the yeah, books. He knows how to fight. Like he knows how to fight. He like the whole, he fights with swords. He fights with boxing. He fights with guns. Like, arrows like he's you know he's not an action hero i would say but in the books he does have those action tendencies right because he is you know he's a fictional you know kind of a legendary detective character right. um and here with henry cavill you see all that you know he does have that you know the stance to fight you know you can definitely see him as a boxer they show his deductive reasoning a little bit there's not a lot he's of a buff sherlock he's oh, buff yeah. Yeah, yeah I love, but I mean I that's just because. Yeah, Henry Cavill's is ripped right right now. At least, um, he thick boy now. He's a tasty <laughs> man. Tasty <Yeah>. man. <laughs> uh, well, uh, <laughs> it, anything else besides the objectification of Henry Cavill? I'm okay with it. Uh, he's okay with it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, he's he's good here. I wish this movie had more detectiving mm. because i mean I, that's not a word but you know what i mean um anola yeah. does a lot of decoding and code breaking yeah which i thought was cool like yeah I, make... I think that's a great characteristic to focus on too yeah you know because she's not sherlock holmes she doesn't have to be sherlock holmes she's the new star you know i'm right. totally down if they want to make a tv show off of her i will watch it because it's yeah it's a cool idea and you know i'm kind of tired of sherlock you know they I won't say what I'm about, what I was about to say. I'll hold off there, but okay, <laughs> I'm tired of you know they keep reinterpreting this person, reinterpreting, yeah. and you know I'm okay with this spinoff idea. You know I was okay with you know uh, the American show Elementary kind of flip flopped it a little bit too because I think their Holmes is a female or maybe they're watching so. a female. I think so. I haven't watched it though. Yeah. Well, it's just like. I, I like the idea of taking the character and doing something different with them. You know, it's like, I mean, I, right, yeah. I mentioned Mycroft not liking Mycroft because of his looks, but like, but they're really... doing a period, uh, interpretation. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, it's, as you said, it's like uh, men of that period were anti-feminist. They were like how he is interpreted. So it's like, right. It, you know, it works. It's still really good. It's just make him fat for the time period because the dude's a fucking millionaire. Yeah. That's one well, thing that... I, oh, I'm sorry. You go ahead and finish. I, I, I was just going to say, again, as you had said, too, he's uh, before their prime, so maybe he's not a millionaire now. But Yeah, maybe. He is very concerned about the money in the mm -hmm. movie. Very mm -hmm. concerned. Uh, I was going to say something about the Sherlock character. So he's kind of caught in the middle because uh, this Sherlock is very... I would say lawful neutral. Mm -hmm. uh, he definitely cares about his sister, but as soon as Minecraft is like, she's my ward, you'll leave her be. He kind of just does that. Yeah. Um, and he's like, yep, that's the case. And um, he goes though, to try to find her. Cause she runs away. That's a big part of the story. I think um, that doesn't really spoil anything. But anyways, he goes to look for her and meets up with this feminist leader and she gives this long speech uh, about how Anola is being repressed. And and you can tell in Sherlock's face that he doesn't disagree, but he's like, I don't get into politics. Yeah. And she's like, 
you better start thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting. It's yeah. not it's not how the literary character is. Again, you don't have to be like the literary character, but like right. You know, the literary character, he really, you know, he it, it's true that he would not care. Mm-hmm. But this this version of him gets emotional. You know, Henry mm-hmm. Henry does get it start getting attached to Enola, and it's like, in the books, that really only happens with Watson. Really, you know, it's like Holmes yeah. doesn't really get attached to people. He has detectives that he you know he knows and makes fun with, but um, emotion doesn't really play into it too much. Um, I mean, he can be emotional. He cares. He's not, uh, you know, a cruel bastard. Right. But, right. I I think he more just keeps it inward like very mm-hmm. deeply inward it spirals down with all the different things that are spiraling down in his head yeah but it's it, it's a good interpretation um you know as i said i really like millie bobby brown as anola i think there's a lot yeah. of fun there uh, i do wish they would hold off on the fourth wall breaks it gets really old yeah really fast i like the first time they did it, i was like oh that's a fun element because like mm-hmm. she's like it's she's also the narrator i don't Mm -hmm. think that really gives anything away um so like at first the first time it happened it was funny funny haha the narrator is gonna poke back and forth deadpool Um, did it yeah right but okay but deadpool can live in the fourth wall he's different that's that's (laughs) what i'm saying but that's the problem is movie theaters now look at that as people enjoyed that it was very successful it must be the fourth wall break because that's what makes that movie so different no it's not it's the character is that that is him that is him he he can cross over he's so fucking crazy he knows different universes you know right right i've always interpreted it i've always interpreted it and we're not talking about deadpool but i've always interpreted it as him like just it's like everybody else in the room just thinks he's talking to himself Mm-hmm. but in in actuality he is but he thinks he's talking to a room full of people who's <laughs> watching his every move yeah well i mean he also just like you know he knows about the patrick stewart timeline or the that's true you know, all that all that kind of stuff like he just knows i'm sure dc universe because of all the green lantern jokes right right so it's like his character can pull off the fourth wall things Mm-hmm. here the fourth wall things i think will be fun for kids oh yeah definitely. but for me as an adult and starting to predict it about 20 minutes into the movie it got tiring really yeah. fast because she did yeah. it so fucking much and... do you see the highest yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's God. not like that it's <laughs> There was a moment like that though, yeah. where she does that, where she's like, "Do you see this?" I'm like, "Am I watching Dora the Explorer?" I yeah. Know? What the fuck. Yeah. Like, but it is, you know, it is meant for teenagers, so right. I don't think it was marketed like that. Maybe it was. No, Again, it, at I don't least really it didn't watch... feel like to me. Yeah, I, I just really saw the trailer trailers. on Netflix though. Yeah, I don't really watch trailers too much, so it's like I, same with you. I just watched the one on Netflix and right. just you know, it, it was a little kiddish, but I thought. It wouldn't be like that, Um, but it doesn't hurt it. You know, I'm just, I'm nitpicking silly things. You know, I still give the movie two and a half stars. It's really enjoyable. That's good. Um, Good acting. Uh, I didn't like, there's moments where Enola Holmes is put into a fighting situation and they have to constantly remind you by doing flashbacks that she was trained by her mother to fight. Like you're not going to believe, you're not going to believe Millie Bobby Brown can fight. You know, and I'm right. just like, I'm sitting here thinking, you showed us 20 minutes ago her mom training her specifically. We get right. it. You don't yeah, have to flash back to it. Yeah, yeah. and they, like, a, like a five-minute fight scene when it's actually like two minutes of fight and three minutes of flashback. Like, you don't have to do that. We're, we, we've we seen it. We know she can fight. Yeah. And this and movie, also... like you said, could have used a little bit of shaving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it is like, I, I can't remember because it's exact length, but it's over two hours long i think yeah it didn't need to be i would no. agree definitely after like um the the mystery was uh tied mm-hmm. up and then they had the it has a long falling action folks and you know sometimes that's not a bad thing but in this particular movie i kind of stopped paying attention and I, yeah that, 
that's no good um uh i do uh i feel like you kind of gave your closing statement but i do kind of want to mention um their because we talked about their minecraft character i do want to talk about their greg lestrade character the inspector this might be the smartest interpretation I've ever seen <laughs> <laughs> of Inspector Lestrade. I'll be honest, uh, I kind of put him out. I don't remember. Uh, he's played was. by Adil uh, Akhtar. Akhtar. I apologize if I butchered your name. But I think... You did. I did. I totally <laughs> did. Um, so I, I'm sorry. But... Uh, Anyhow, he and Enola play this little mind game back and forth um, at trying to see who knows uh, Sherlock better. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And uh, and he he did put some things together like like he's not a bad investigator in this. And I feel like yeah. other interpretations of him show him as being kind of a bumbler. Um and there is yeah. a couple of bumbler moments with him in the movie too, but yeah, he's kind uh, of he's always taken as a comedic character. I I honestly don't remember him too much in the stories. I know he's in right. them. Um, he's not. I don't think he's as huge in them as he is in like shows and in the movies. Like it's yeah, similar he's to a Irene pretty Adler. big element in the next movie. Yeah, like it, it's very similar to Irene Adler though, where it's like they took a character from one story and blew her up to be huge. Like okay. she's she's only mentioned i think in one story and then like briefly mentioned in a second one and okay. but lestrade lestrade's in more i just don't know the total of them and i don't want to speak without knowing the right the proper knowledge right, right. but yeah he's he's definitely made more of a comedic character for the stories and in most interpretations right. here here they do use him comedically but he is definitely as you said a a smarter take on him right yeah like he's he actually um does uh he does better things later he kind of like the bumbling part is that he gets in the way mm -hmm. and i feel like he plays that role in the sh in the other interpretations when he's working with sherlock too um that sometimes he works against sherlock on accident <laughs> yeah um uh but I I just really liked um, uh, Adil Akhtar's uh, interpretation. I thought he did a good job. I just wanted to mention that before I moved on. Yeah. Uh, did you have anything else to say about Nola? Um, no, I think that's that's pretty much it. You know, it's a good uh, good. I think again, as I said, if they had stretched it out to be a TV show or chopped it up to be a shorter movie, um, you know, I think where they left it while it's still a fun movie for teens and it's a great empowering film for women to you know be you know go right. beyond you don't have to be what society tells you to you know you don't have to stay in your place like that yeah um you know i think that's a good message overall not just for young women but like find your own path i think exactly was the direct message from this mm -hmm. exactly and i you know it's it's meant for everyone again not just young women but pretty fun go out and see it uh yeah yeah i i would say cl in closing that i completely agree with everything you said about this movie um i i think that it could have been done maybe a touch better but the all the performances were pretty good um especially the main cast they did great and um i i think that there's a lot of uh good gems in this movie but they could have been polished up a little bit more but still worth it watching it's worth watching folks mm -hmm. and look we did make 30 minutes out of enola we did make 30 minutes <laughs> <laughs> i had no faith in her look at uh, me sexist uh, bastard oh uh, damn it greg <laughs> uh okay well uh yeah let's move on to sherlock holmes yeah well sherlock holmes by guy ritchie uh, I should say before I dive into the movie that typically I do not like Guy Ritchie movies. I know a lot of a lot of crime fans are mad at me now. You know, Lock, <laughs> Lock Stock and Two Smoking Barrels or whatever it's called, and all of his. You know, I've seen a lot of his films. I don't remember a lot of them, and I don't te technically hate them. Right. I just don't remember them. 
That's that's perfectly fair. Yeah. I mean, I, but he's just a lot of people love him. He's got like he's got that cult following, man. This um, is really the only thing I know. Well, um, then he did the the new King Arthur movie too. Okay. I didn't hate that. Like, I, I thought it was an interesting interpretation. I know you didn't like it. Wait, 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 yeah. wait, wait. No, no, the the newest one, like, the with the young blonde kid? Yeah. Okay, I didn't see that one. I thought you were talking about yeah. the, uh, not Russell Crowe. The, the Clive Owen. The Clive Owen, yeah. Yeah, that one's not bad. That's a decent interpretation. That's um, interesting. I like the Roman thing. Yeah, like, it... But just like with Sherlock Holmes, King Arthur's one of my favorite literary characters. Right. Or, right. I guess, mythological, almost. Um, it's hard to say. And, and <laughs> Guy Ritchie's... Arthur. Yeah, Guy Ritchie's more recent adaptation did so much to the character that I hated that, like, it's... Again, like, again, if you're interpreting interpreting something, it's your, uh, yeah. your will. Do what you want. But at the same time, you do have to be a little loyal to the character, I would say, because right. it's... I don't know. His his character is loyal to extent, but we're not talking that film. Maybe someday. Maybe we're talking someday. Sherlock Holmes, where he got the character so fucking perfect that that's what I was going to say earlier. Why do we keep making Sherlock Holmes movies when we've already nailed the character? <laughs> yeah, I don't, because, Why haven't they made a third one of the, this one? It's, 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 it's scheduled. Oh, okay. uh, I guess it's set to release at the end of next year, but not with Guy Ritchie. Um, oh, that's too bad. They are getting Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law back. Cool. But here, this is the movie that sets it all up. Uh, you have a young Sherlock Holmes. This is coming off of the... It, it came out in 2009, coming off of the uh, success of Batman Begins. That's kind of how they hmm. sold this movie, was that uh, you know Batman Begins, you had a younger Batman who was learning the ropes of you know what he was doing. And here you have a young Sherlock Holmes who is also learning the ropes. He's already established a lot right. of his role in this world. Very like people talented, know him. clearly. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, he's you know it's very, very early on in his career. He's him and him and Watt, but also like pretty far along that him and Watson have had enough adventures that Watson's ready to move out. Yeah, he's like I'm done. <laughs> Watson's like I'm getting married. I'm moving in with Mary. You can go fuck yourself, Sherlock. You're too fucking crazy for me. <laughs> um, but this this is a very Hound of the Baskervilles type of story. You have uh, Mark Strong plays the villain of Lord Blackwood. He does um, a good job. Amazing job. Uh, very creepy at times. Very eerie. Um, but it, he's he's got something supernatural. You know, that's that's his mystery. He's he's. He has black magic of some art, you know, that Sherlock's got to figure out because, damn it, magic can't exist. Right, um, yeah. And so it's a very it's a very Hound of the Baskervilles story where you have something that seems completely supernatural in every aspect. Uh, but the more you look into it, the more you see the, the mystery unraveled. And that's this story in a nutshell. You know, you get all the major players... Except for Mycroft, really. But you get all the major players of Sherlock Holmes. You know, Irene Adler is in it. Uh, played by Rachel McAdams. Mycroft She's is good. technically... Or not Mycroft. Um, Moriarty, Moriarty is technically in it. Yeah, he ha- It's not the same actor as who they cast in Game of Shadows. And you but never they also see don't, his face. Yeah, you never see his face. His, his voice is definitely not the same voice. But, no. you know, they, they did a great job at not showing him because they hadn't cast the character yet you know so right. it's like it was it was really well done that he's played in the shadows and it it definitely makes the sequel more tense because you're like watching this one you're like oh man they're gonna do a sequel because moriarty is uh they, they, you know mentioned. they've already set him up <laughs> yeah he's mentioned he's shown yeah. he points a gun at sherlock <laughs> right yeah uh, that's their first encounter yeah, but that's yeah. that's a good synopsis. Is that's Lord Blackwood's mystery. He's not a character in the stories. There's no no character like him, to my knowledge, in the mo- or in the books. Um, not a bad yeah. way to start, though. I think for uh, something that they're trying to make a you know a trilogy out of. Yeah, 
um, step away from the books a little bit because all of the books have had cinematic interpretations at um, some point, very yeah. early on in, in, in cinematic history. They've all. Yeah, well, I, I mean, there's only really like one book and then like four novellas and then like 50 fucking stories. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. So it's just. Yeah, it, it's it's great. I own them all, and I would love to read them again with everybody who whoever wants to read them. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean it's hard not to talk this movie without talking the books though, because this is the most loyal I've seen any interpretation get uh, to the books. And yes, it is very blockbustery. It's very fast paced, very action heavy. Yeah. Um, lots of jokes that you're not gonna find in a dry eighteen hundreds book. Um, but Robert Downey Jr. is, in my opinion, the best interpretation you we've ever gotten as Sherlock Holmes. Also, Guy Ritchie does a really good job of making, um, industrial, uh, London. Yeah. It's very steampunk. The world is great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't. I don't know if I want to say steampunky so much as is that it's it's Just dirty. Steam. It it <laughs> looks as dirty as I'd imagine life actually being at yeah. that time, because you know you get a lot of interpretations of the late eighteenth century, um, or even the mid eighteenth century, where there's all these posh people, and occasionally mm-hmm. they'll they'll look they'll give a view of like the impoverished people on the streets. Yeah, but. I feel like the whole, I think everyone's costume was covered in coal soot. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. In this movie. Well, you got your, you got your posh side of London. You got your Sweeney Todd side of London. (laughs) That's right. That's right. You sure do. And this was, I think that both the worlds were mixed pretty well in this. Mm. Um, uh, Because there are some like, uh, you know, aristocratic people that get involved with the, the case. His, his, the, the guy the villain's name is lord blackwood yeah uh which is within the first f- uh five minutes no even three minutes i would say they're mm-hmm. talking about him um which i do like uh it's not a huge plot spoiler but like there is a group of like a secret society almost right that the lord is like slowly um working his way into into, yeah yeah and because they're all part of the government and i think that's a really fun uh you know really fun look on it because there are a lot of people involved in government who are part of other societies you know like that that it's just like it is kind of curious how one person could you know weasel their way into something to disrupt an entire government um and this movie even though that's not like really hitting it over the head like you know it's a blockbuster again it's trying to be more action but that concept alone is like woof you know it's like sherlock's uh sherlock's got a lot on his plate right here right yeah like yeah he's definitely uh put in a position in this movie to uh save the country Mm -hmm. uh the 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 stakes are a lot higher than he he initially thought they were in yeah. the story. And I do I do there's another aspect that goes off of that too. It's like as a savior of the country, you think he'd be very well known. Um people know his name. Yeah. But they don't know his face. And Anola Holmes likes doesn't it that way. <laughs> yeah, of course. But it's like Anola Holmes doesn't really go into this aspect. Um they don't really talk about the popularity of Sherlock. He's a well known name, but nobody like expresses you know, like that's Sherlock Holmes. I think- I think um, she mentions that she kept all his newspaper clippings. That's about yeah, it. yeah, exactly. But like here, they specifically like at the beginning of the movie, uh, Robert Downey Jr. puts his hand up to block his face when a photo is taken, so that you don't see him his yeah. face in, in the newspaper. You see a hand up, like raised over it. Um, and Mister Holmes, the next movie we'll talk about, also kind of goes into how Sherlock misled right. the public so that they wouldn't right. know where he was. Um, and I, I like that aspect too because he's a lot of what Sherlock does involves on the ground work. Right. You know, he's doing a lot yeah. of investigating and he can't do that if people know who he is, if he's constantly right. being called out. I mean, he is yeah. a master of disguise, which this movie does slightly go into. Um, 
I but think at the they same do time, that pretty well in this they movie. do yeah i agree um but they don't uh even though he's a master of disguise he doesn't want to go around in disguise all the time you know it's nice to go around as himself yeah um every now and then i i i like how this movie put thought into how he would disguise his identity so that people wouldn't constantly know who sherlock holmes is right and how quickly he can do it too like I, yeah I like i like that too in this movie. um well yeah let's go into that let's talk about the, his deduction method um this is one of like you know the best takes on how sherlock deduces a scene um right. you know they slow everything down you get into robert downey jr's head and in a slow motion way you know like he walks you through how he's going to take out you know if he's fighting right. somebody how he's going to take this guy out while fighting them uh if he's just in a scene of how he has to escape how he's going to escape that and it's i really like that i definitely wanted to say at some point when we we're talking about this that this movie has one of the best and most practical uses of slow motion mm-hmm. uh, that i've seen in a movie and that's because yeah. they actually make it a part of his character yeah and it's it's super smart and it that's why it kind of works for guy Ritchie too because he loves that right. um he likes to utilize that you know take a fast scene and uh, cut into slow motion real fast with uh with the king arthur movie it pisses me off he does it a lot i think i i've only seen it once so it's i could be just completely bullshitting about king arthur when i say there's a lot of slow motion but i do remember it annoying me here as you said it works really well and it looks great and it makes for a fun action blockbuster um and that's kind of why i like guy Ritchie for this role because as you said it's part of the character um, yeah you know he slows that he he has that that ability that mental ability to slow down to think and to work his way out of an issue um, right at the same time that mental ability really fucks with him you know this movie goes a yeah. lot into his drug use right a lot of people seem to forget that you know sherlock does heroin and takes opium in the books right. in the stories you know I think in this movie, I think there is a one opium scene um, when he's um, really trying to understand uh, Blackwood's methods. I think yeah. that's when he does it. Uh, but he also he uh, he drinks formaldehyde, yeah. uh, and uh, he tests drugs on himself and their dog and his dog. Yeah, Gladstone yeah. is constantly being killed. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that there. I don't remember actually seeing Gladstone conscious in the movie. I don't remember. There's that. one scene at the end <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> where he wakes up. <laughs> That's right, when he wakes up out of his induced coma. <laughs> feel so bad for that dog yeah <laughs> and i i really enjoy that they do play really well off of how the drugs affect sherlock's relationships you know it's like right. john is or i think i said james watson earlier john watson is very uh tired of it you know he, he yeah. comes in he comes home to 221 v baker street walks up the stairs and you know sherlock is shooting into the wall or just hanging there um in a literal noose yeah. like it's you know it, it, it weighs on him at times where he's just like god damn it, sure. like this guy <laughs> like he, he pushes all my fucking buttons at, um, at the end of the movie he does seem like he has a little bit more endearment for sherlock like he remembers why they're such good friends yeah um, i mean he's never even though he's annoyed by it he's never like so irritated that he's like i want this guy out of my life right yeah, it, they're still like brothers they're still best friends um you know it's just he has to he has to have some somewhat normal normality to his everyday existence so he's gotta he's gotta marry and move away so that he can just live happy <laughs> yeah because with sherlock it's just too crazy too constant yeah so um i don't know i mean i, I feel like we could talk a lot more about this movie well i do want to uh, talk a lot more all right (laughs) i want to talk let's talk let's talk because there's still we still have to go through a lot more characters too because let's talk jude law's watson oh right again i think this is our only watson yeah actually yeah he wasn't in the other two movies he's which i can respect that for the other two movies what's that 
I can respect the other two movies not use it, using him too. Right. Like that's right. it's nice to distance yourself because Enola isn't about Sherlock. It's about Enola. Yeah, exactly. And Mr. Holmes will talk why Watson's not in Mr. Holmes when we get right, to Mr. Holmes. Right. And he, and he he is kind of in Mr. Holmes, but I, I guess we'll talk about that. Later. Yeah. But yeah, this is our only real Watson character. And again, just like with RDJ, home run. You you nailed the character. A lot yeah. of a lot of the takes, a lot of the adaptations of John Watson make him pretty stupid. You know, he's there to document. He's a doctor still, so he's smart. But, right. you know, he's nowhere near Sherlock's level, so he's, you know, he's just a bumbling guy that Sherlock bounces ideas off of to help Sherlock. Here, right. he's an actual, you know, he's he's been with Sherlock long enough that he's a, a detective in his own right. You know, exactly. he walks up on a scene and he could be like, well, your, you know, your troops fucked this whole scene up. You know, your footprints are everywhere. You, know, you can't get any good evidence with your, you know, your troops wandering around here. Uh, the policeman, that is. Right. Um, and, and Sherlock uses that to go and investigate the scene when they don't really like <laughs> look at things that they he they don't really want him to. Yeah. Yeah. And, but but it's, again, this is a very competent Watson. Yes. He's he's smart in his own right. I mean, of course, he's not Sherlock's level of smart, but he's right. smart enough to work with Sherlock. And right. they work so well together. I love the chemistry yeah. between Jude Law and Robert Downey Jr. Um, They're a good team. Well, Robert wasn't even originally going to be cast because Guy Ritchie thought he was too old for a Batman Begins Sherlock Holmes. Sure. Um, sure. But he was just too perfect of a role that they were just like, all right, we have to. Who did they have in mind? I'm honestly not sure. I don't. I don't remember seeing who their uh, person was. I don't know if they right. had anyone specific, or if they just took a bunch of auditions and they're like, "No, nah, yeah. not Robert. He's too old." But well, at the same I would time, say too perfect. maybe not so much anymore. But ten years ago, when this movie was made, Robert Downey Jr. could play any age. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean... yeah, because he does. He does still seem very young in this movie. Yes. Like, obviously. It does seem earlier in his career, but I would say only like five or six years in his career as right. a detective. Um, he has a parlay with a lot of the detectives that he's working with. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just you know, Inspector Lestrade. Here's their here's your your stuttering, um, kind of buffoonish inspector. Uh, as we, as we've already mentioned, they muddle up scenes. Uh, right. When he when he use, utilizes him and his plans, it doesn't always go correctly because Sherlock doesn't always take uh, lower intelligence into effect or into factor for some of his stuff. Um, but for the most part, you know, it's now that I'm thinking about it, there is one moment with Lestrade that I didn't understand, and uh, it involves he reveals something on his lapel to a bad guy. And they never really go on into that further. Oh, like, um, well, I mean, I could explain it, uh, but I, I think it might be a bit of a spoiler, too. Yeah. Um, because it is a part of the, the plot a little bit. Um, uh, should we put up a quick wall? I think it would only be like a couple minutes, if that. No, I mean, I don't think it's important to really talk about, but it's just like... okay. I don't know. They did, I, did, I felt like they like showed it, and it's like a big kind of like oh crap twist, and then it's like oh no, it's not. You know, they don't go <laughs> into it at all after that. Sure, sure. Um, I, I will say that like they don't really go into it that far. Yeah. Um, I think, I think it was something along the lines. Uh, it turned into a little bit of a joke too. Uh, Sherlock says, "Oh, now I understand why you how you managed to get <laughs> into the yeah. force." uh yeah because he really is pretty pretty dumb in this movie i feel yeah. like this lestrade really depends on sherlock to get mm -hmm. any cases done but he also <laughs> doesn't like sherlock yeah well i think he also I, I wouldn't say he doesn't like sherlock i would say that he respects him and is okay with working with him but it's a drain to work with yes him. yes uh, because because robert downey jr's take as we said is very bohemian he's he's wild uh mm. you know he you know they have an exploded rock wall and he goes up and licks the raw the rock um yeah 
you know, they're just like, this guy's crazy, he's weird. Um, so it's a drain to work with him. It's like, I get they were implying that he was part of, like, a society. Gotcha. But they don't explain if he's actually part of the society or if it was just, like, a, a prop that he right. he used to sell a, a red herring. Right, Um right. I don't know. I just felt like that was kind of like a something that might have been deleted, you know, that like maybe a, a yeah, further yeah, maybe a further scene. scene. Yeah. Yeah. Uh there is Yeah, I don't think it really messes with it too much cuz we didn't really tell how the the society plays into the plot or anything. But uh one of the upper members of the scene does mention earlier on in the movie that he has a lot of connections within the police. Yeah, that's right. I, yeah, yeah. And it, it is part of what happens going further, but I just, I wish they had maybe explained Lestrade's role just a little bit more yeah. since he does play more of an integral role in the plot in this one. Yeah. Uh, going off of Lestrade, the last two characters I think we should talk about are their, the villain, Lord Blackwood, uh, played by Mark Strong, which as we've said, really well done yeah uh, he's worked with oh, yeah. he's worked with guy Ritchie before and i think that really helped make a good villain because they have a good rapport um yeah like there's not really much to say about lord blackwood other than that mark strong did a great job one of the few original characters for the story or for the movie i mean so like you know he didn't have to base it off of anything he just had to no. be good and he was good. this guy like i feel like uh, he does think similarly to Sherlock. Mm-hmm. Not the way that Moriarty does, yeah. but to be able to to get, you know, people to follow you and stuff the way that he does. Yeah. You gotta he's be got able good to plan things out. <laughs> yeah, but he's just, he's a forward thinker too. Yeah. Which he has he, that... Oh, cool. I was gonna say he has that evil charisma where it's like yeah. you know, he can he intimidates you so well. Um he is a forward thinker. Mm. Whereas like Sherlock sees reality, he's able to think in terms of like the supernatural. Um right. you know, that right. that's kind of how he fools Sherlock is like he goes beyond what Sherlock would know. Right. Right. And you know, he I think uses, that's a great villain. Yeah. He uses a lot of rhetoric. And uh, which is a lot of fun, too, and, and plays in with the mystery and everything. But like there's even this one scene when he's he is in a jail cell and it sounds like he's saying dark prayers. And I I'm pretty sure that um, he was kind of just rattling off things off the top of his head to to scare the the other cellmates Mm -hmm. Uh, it was just all part of this persona he like just plays up this persona the whole time and yeah it's really good yeah it's really well done uh what's not really well done in my opinion is there irene adler no you're not a big fan of uh rachel mcadams i like rachel mcadams i think she is a very good actor in this role i think they they weaken this character in my opinion like she she is presented as being sherlock's equal and then twice in this movie she's made the damsel in distress yeah that's and true it's, and it, it irritates me because it's like if she's able to you know fuck with sherlock's mind and work around right. sherlock and you know they even show her being able to take on two thugs in the street by herself right why is she turned into their damsel twice i think Find- I think the one time though, the the earlier time, um, I think she's using that, or maybe maybe the last. I don't know. Anyway, she does use it to her advantage after mm-hmm. she gets saved by Sherlock. Yeah, yeah. Like it's definitely like it. It could be read as part of her like plan. Her you know her right. deduction is Sherlock will save me, then I can get away. Um, and I get that, but she's also a competent woman in her own rights right yeah and they've shown that they've shown her with you know she pulls out that little nightstick thing and knocks the crap out of these two guys right that's a good scene yeah yeah 
And it's like, I you do see that scene and you're like, okay, Rachel McAdams is pretty good Irene Adler. And then they're just yeah. like, and now she's hanging up and about to get sawn in half. And it's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Which I mean, like, like it. you know, people, like, even Sherlock gets into positions where yeah. he's, like, he's got to figure it out or he's going to die. I mean, um, I agree. I just feel like using your woman character... Definitely. Your one, your one empowered woman character to be your damsel, rather yeah. than say James w- or John Watson. Why do I keep saying James? <laughs> rather than John Watson. Uh, yeah. Or they could even have used Mary, and then Irene could have helped them to save Mary. But uh, you know, she wouldn't have been in the thick of it, except yeah. for. Uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyways. Uh, I I think I agree with you. I I I know I was kind of seemed like I was debating against what you're saying. <laughs> uh, I agree with you. Um, and I think that that is a a script problem. You know, mm. it's just I mean, and also it's ten years ago, uh, yeah. which you know isn't really a, an excuse. But pe- you know, people are a lot more uh, forward thinking about that. Like, well, not forward thinking is the word I want to say there. A lot more um, perceptive to those choices. They 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 are looking for that and being yeah. like, okay, listen, you could do better than this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like um, you can use somebody else in this area. I yeah. get I get for Sherlock's character, it definitely does make the stakes a little higher. Uh, yeah. But you know, whatever. It's still a great movie. It's still a very fun action movie. Um, there's one. There's one pro and one con that I wanted to talk about before we do a co- closing statement. Sure. There's two last things that I think we should mention. The last pro is the crazy, awesome, amazing soundtrack by Hans Zimmer. Oh my god, I do. I love. I listen to this sometimes just to yeah. listen to it. It's really good. It's so fun. It's very fast paced. Yeah. Very. Um, a lot of fiddle, I, jig mm-hmm. music. Um, and then, like, the action scenes still pl- have that fiddle in it, but it's yeah. definitely action mu- m- movie mu- music. Me. <laughs> yeah, I would, uh, I think it's called Discombobulation. Uh, it's one of the, I think that's one of the songs on this. Um, highly recommend listening to that if you can find it on, like, YouTube or whatever. But the, the yeah. soundtrack for this is phenomenal. Makes every action scene just, like, ten times better um just that they make this movie so so enjoyable yes um yeah. and and it, and it makes you forgive the blockbustery feel of this a little bit yeah it i i will i will agree with that like the music really uh saves it from being too yeah i guess blockbustery is the only word too I bold can think of either. Yeah, too, too, too yeah too too punchy mm-hmm that might be it too because the the music is punchy but it's definitely got a feeling of the country that they're in and the yeah. period that they're in and um it just fits the world so well mm-hmm. that i i think it 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 does help the uh the the punchiness uh which is kind of my biggest problem with this movie because it could i i mean I agree with you that I I would love to see more uh, adaptations with uh, Sherlock getting into some great fight scenes, mm-hmm. but I do enjoy, um, because a lot of mystery solving isn't going to cause him to be into fights, at least not yeah. at first. Yeah, that's not his end. You know, his end game is to solve the mystery, right, and have a cup of tea um (laughs) but like here it's definitely you know it's like i gotta solve the mystery but oh crap i got into a fight with a guy who's you know six foot four and 270 pounds (laughs) that's a great scene though (laughs) it's beautiful (laughs) Uh, and then he like throw he he electrocutes the guy onto another henchman and later you find out that 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 action in and of itself killed the other henchman (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) it's just (laughs) <laughs> oh it's so weird uh, i i, I really did like uh the actor's name the really big guy he's like i think he's like seven foot tall I, 
Yeah. Uh, Robert Millet, I think, uh, if I'm getting my French pronunciation right. <laughs> Probably not. But he plays Dredger, and um, he's, he, uh, yeah, he's only in the movie to be in fights, really, but he does have some great French monologues. Uh, yeah, it's uh, dialogue, it's not, anyways. Yeah, it's like not only is he in the movie to be in fights, he is a little intelligent of a henchman yeah. himself. Yeah, you know, it's it's and, it's a hilarious fight scene. <laughs> I, I feel like the uh, the other henchmen, uh, they because they don't speak French, they do think that Dredger is a bit of a, a dummy, but he's not. No, uh, and he has these great dialogues while he's fighting. Uh, it's great. Sherlock. It's pretty great. Yeah, he has just as good of chemistry with Robert Downey Jr. as Jude Law. Does. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Oh, uh, but yeah, I guess closing statement for you. For me, um, yeah, I I mean, I really like this movie. I enjoyed the hell out of it the first time I watched it and even the couple uh, subsequent times. Yeah. But this time around, I kind of wish it was a little less of a blockbuster. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's what I got to say about it, but definitely worth it. Go Go watch the movie. Um, mm-hmm. especially because the sequel even more so is worth yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I will agree with that. I'll, I'll bounce off that. If we were doing a game of shadows, right. The, the reason I opted to do this one rather than a game of shadows is because n- the other two movies would not have a chance. <laughs> I, I love a game of shadows so much. It's such a it's good really movie. Good. Um, the guy they got to play Moriarty, I, I can't remember his name right now, but like, I love that actor. He's in so many things we love. He, yeah. Well, yeah, we, he's in Fringe, which right. we've already mentioned. We love Fringe. He's my favorite villain in Fringe. Oh, yeah. sorry. Sec, second favorite villain. I won't spoil who my, I won't spoil who my favorite villain is. Um, but no, he's, he's an amazing actor and he plays Moriarty so well that any other Sherlock Holmes movie would not have a chance. But here, here, I love this movie. I do respect that it has faults. Um, you know, I don't, even though I love Sherlock's ability to deduce things, a lot of times in this movie, he'll deduce it after the fact. So they'll yeah. they'll show the scene, they'll show him escaping, and then he'll explain to somebody else how he escaped, and they'll do a little bit of a flashback. Yeah. So it's, um, the, it's the villain monologue, but it's the protagonist giving it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it, it and it's fine. It's funny, and it works, and it you know it makes for a very interesting scene. And you're kind of like, oh, that's how he did it. Okay, and yeah. you know it doesn't ruin anything. Um, but I do wish it was more how like the fight scenes were set up, where he shows you how he's going to take care of it, and then they show you in real time him taking care of it. Um, you know, it's like those scenes are amazing. Uh, but yeah, as you said, it's very blockbustery, very action heavy. Um, Again, I don't think it ruins the movie, but it definitely is a different take on Sherlock than most people were used to. Because his, yeah. you know, Sherlock had kind of disappeared from, I'm sure there were, you know, adaptations throughout the last few decades, but like from my from my beliefs, he kind of disappeared from the TV movie scene for a while until this movie came out. I would say so. Um I don't remember if Moffat's thing was before or after or it's during. after it's after um, but yeah it did he did disappear for a little while I think people got tired of it and then all of a sudden uh, another big boom of yeah. Sherlock stuff uh, which is fine I mean I I mean it's he's a great character it's uh, yeah they... you know who doesn't want to watch I, I, I think also I think like the mystery genre kind of died down Mm-hmm. too a little bit and th- this did kind of bring it back yeah it makes it makes movies like uh what was it? knife out knives knives out. out yeah yeah it makes it makes them more you know enjoyable because now those are becoming popular again yeah. um but like again here it's like yeah as you said this movie brought back sherlock to the you know to attention and it makes me sad because even though it's a blockbuster, they nailed it when they did this. Like, yeah, they, they you know, did they did this. Job. They did Game of Shadows. Do a third one of this. Wrap it up. Let the rights sit for about two decades, right. and don't worry about it. Right. Um, 
but then again, you know, I, I as I said, I, I do like seeing Enola Holmes as a TV show. So, like, you're not going to stop people from remaking Sherlock Holmes, but... No. But, you know, what? Very... they could put twists on it, like you said. Like, they can, mm-hmm. they can make it different. Yeah. Um, and like, and I know, respect like, it when they do that. Putting Sherlock in modern london like in the in the moffat show yeah and those are practically movies <laughs> yeah i mean themselves. if we were talking those also like if we if we bring those up i again i think benedict cumberbatch is as close to a perfect cast as you can get for sherlock yeah. there are things about his sherlock i don't like but he's just as good as robert downey jr he's just he's not I'd as crazy so. yeah you know, i'd say so but you know but here, you know, they nailed it with the movie. They especially nail it in the sequel. But you know, I am biased going up for this threesome in that in that regard. That yeah, I love so much about this movie. I give it three stars. It doesn't it doesn't quite you know the blockbuster in this does bring it down. But you know, but that it is... also makes it just keeps you interested. Like, exactly. That, I think that's the only reason why to do it, it in that style. Yeah, it made it a good delivery system for modern day audiences. Yes, definitely. Um, and I, I think like, I feel like people who love like old school Sherlock movies might watch this and not enjoy it. Like, yeah, they'll be pissed. <laughs> yeah, but but like you said, it is a really good interpretation. Yeah, um, it's it's characters. very loyal. They yeah. they tried they tried to be as loyal to the story as they could be. Even though it is, you know, fantastical and big budget action stuff, it still does, you know, you could still see this all taking place in one of his mystery novels right. or stories, I uh, guess. I guess I did kind of want to mention that they did make uh, the fact that he fought in the Afghan wars very prevalent to Watson's mm-hmm. character, mm-hmm. Um, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, yeah. Another thing that they did pretty well in the, the modern Moffat interpretation of it. Yeah, just in a different Anyways. Afghan war. Yeah, different Afghan war. Uh, so, did we do it? Did we talk about that Sherlock Holmes? I think we're done with Sherlock Holmes. We can move on to Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes. And then he got old. He did. He did. He got old. <laughs> uh, Mr. Holmes. Uh, yeah, so Ian McKellen... Um, it's directed Sir, by Bill Condon of Twilight's Breaking Dawn 1 and 2. I had no idea. Those, does, that, does that change your opinion of Mr. Holmes at all? <laughs> uh, no, it doesn't. Because I thought the movie was uh, pretty good. I, I enjoyed it. Um, I, just, I, think it, I think it's hilarious to look at Mr. Holmes. And then I haven't seen Breaking Dawn. Uh, I, seen... those are, I think those are the only two I haven't seen. Yeah, I honestly think I've seen the first two Twilight. Did they make four or five? They they turned the four into five because they turned the four into five because there yeah. are four books. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I believe, so I think I've only seen the first two. Believe it goes Twilight, New Moon, Eclipse, mm-hmm. and then Breaking Dawn. Breaking Dawn. I mean, I've read the books. I you know I had girlfriends in high school. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I did not read the books, but uh, uh, I did have a girlfriend who wanted to see the movie. Yeah. Until I didn't we, have, yeah, I didn't until have we watched when Eclipse. The came out. <laughs> we were already like to- pretty over it by the time after Mo- New Moon, and we weren't very uh, excited for Eclipse. And then it, and then we did go see it, and it wasn't good. Someday and we'll watch those movies and talk. Sometime, them someday, sometime, someday. Ooh, that'll be a great playlist. Uh, but in Mr. Yeah, we'll, Holmes, Sir Ian we'll have McKellen, a, we'll have a pajama party. Sir Ian McKellen uh, does a, I think, a great job. Oh my god, phenomenal, play. phenomenal, phenomenal. Yeah, he play. He basically plays two Sherlock Holmes. Uh, because the film is constantly harking back to a particular case. Um, which is late in the detective's career, the last case, in fact. Yeah, in his in his seventies, I think. Yeah, and he is in his, uh, I would say, mid nineties. Yeah, yeah, he's ninety three when he's retelling this story. Right, and he, oh my god, uh, he about makes me cry. Um, just yeah, it's, watching it's, him move, he's so good. Yeah, 
I will oh. say it's it's hard to watch for me at times. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I'll, it. It, yeah, that's the the synopsis as you said is. Uh, well, I think to add to the synopsis is that he he's struggling with uh, uh, Alzheimer's. Memory they loss. called it yeah. salinity, I think, in in the period. Senility. Yeah, and because um, he's going senile. Yes, exactly. Um, but you know, obviously, Sherlock Holmes is extremely smart, so he mm-hmm. knows it's happening to him, and yeah. he is. Um, keeping track of it with help of a doctor and there's also uh, a housekeeper because he can't live alone he's a bit too old and he's also uh has alzheimer's uh yeah sorry and she has a little boy named roger uh very was very fond of yes sherlock yes and that, and that is i would say that is the synopsis yeah um and sherlock also reaches out to uh I can't remember where the country is where he finds that Japan. He goes out to Japan. Japan. Yeah. Okay. He goes to Japan to find prickly ash to help him with his Alzheimer's. That's right. Yes. uh, To to combat his memory loss, so that he could tell this crime, this last uh, story of his, his last case, right, um, properly, because you know he believes his friend Watson did not write it down. uh, Right, and he doesn't know why. Yeah, he doesn't know why it's it's wrong yeah there's, um, some, there's just something off about it that he remembers like you know why would that be my last case right right you know it, it's gotta be more if if it was yeah. successful why was it my last i know it was my last yeah. but i mm-hmm. yeah and there was things in the in the story that he didn't remember and i think the thing is is that he read he read the story after his brother died because his brother bought all his books and they were sent mm-hmm. over to him he had never read yep. the stories until that point uh yeah and, and that's, that, that's another go ahead that that's another key factor of this movie is being late in life all of his friends are dead you know there's yeah. no lestrade anymore there's no watson there's no uh Minecraft, Mycroft, <laughs> or like even Moriarty is like you know I don't know if they ever mention him in the movie. But I don't think they do. Yeah, all all of the key players in a normal Sherlock movie are gone. It's just yes, it's just the Sherlock who, quite honestly, like he might you know there's even though you know he's Sherlock, there's times where he's not Sherlock anymore. His yeah, his memory has deteriorated so much that you know he's just it's so hard to watch because you know you know him for what he is they they do right. a great job at setting up his uh his rapport you know uh his prestige um right it's it's hard to watch sometimes because it is it's so sad bit. it is um and like i i feel like there's so another thing about this movie is that i believe it is set in 1950 or at least 48 49 it's after world war ii it's mm-hmm. long enough after world war ii that sherlock goes to japan and visits hiroshima yeah. um which that really intrigues me because you don't think of this young detective man in in a time period where the main yeah. mode of uh, transportation was a train growing to be an old man where everybody's zipping around on on cars yeah or um, like even just living through those wars like yeah exactly like that i mean you don't really think about how fast things changed yeah um in those 50 well, years well i mean also again mentioning because mycroft is you know his brother is a governmental figure so they probably utilized sherlock's brain during the war some way oh i'm sure you know? yeah so it's like yeah. you know you don't think about that and that's one of the beauties of this movie is it definitely adds a side to sherlock that you don't get to see you know you, you always yes. focus on him and his prime because that's when the stories are happening right but but here you're you're in his you know he's he he mentions he's lived beyond his uh beyond his years you know beyond his time right you know, he, he got too old um and it's beautiful to watch 
at times and extremely hard to watch at times because yes. you know it's uh again there's that kid that's staying with him his housekeeper roger. son played by yeah roger uh i think it's played by milo parker yep um decent you know good good uh young actor performance mm-hmm. um you know but he he grows so fond of sherlock and like he refuses to believe that this old man's gonna die you know and it's right yeah that's another hard part to watch is you know when 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 he falls down and roger has to realize that this guy is a fragile human being who's not right. gonna be here much longer right um roger know, just... is his last friend yeah and uh it is it is really just a beautiful story about their relationship i that is yeah. honestly what this story is about and um, you get you get the you get the mom's drop not drama but like um yeah she's yeah, very she's... wary of her son and sherlock's relationship and yeah and i get it though you know it's yeah. like because it's not where she wants to be either um, right yeah she does want to leave yeah yeah she wants you know her her life is turmoil and chaos right now and you know she does there's no father figure anymore father um, died in the most recent war exactly and so it's you know it's be, because as she put it too like because she's a worker you know she's right. part of the worker class um they do a they do a great metaphor with the bees because sherlock has uh sherlock's disappeared from the world to raise uh to be a beekeeper you know he has an apiary yeah. where he c- takes care of bees and it's one of the last things that makes him happy it's one of the last things remaining to him is this process of keeping bees um and as is mentioned with the bees you know you have your queen and you have the worker and the worker works yeah um and that's kind of one of the things about the mom character is she's a worker Mm -hmm. and her husband was a worker but when her husband went to war he refused to be a worker he had to be part of the air force you know he's like i'm not gonna be yeah you know working underneath a jeep when there's a war going on you know he wanted to fight in his very first mission he went up in the air and got shot down yep and you know that's that's integral to her character right she fears um she fears roger's ambition but roger's a very smart bright kid and that's why he and sherlock uh get along because sherlock Mm -hmm. notices his brightness yeah and you know the kid the kid's reading his the kid is sherlock's sole reader for this final case right and you know it's it's sherlock's kind of remembering things it, it kind of I, I kind of felt like sherlock was doing it for the kid after a while it wasn't it was no after longer, a while yeah it was no longer just for himself for his memory and you know it's it's a really beautiful and fun story um yeah well i would say and, it's well told yeah well told and simple you yeah know, a lot of movies like with uh with guy ritchie's sherlock holmes they had to make it you know blockbuster action pack um but also to have like twists you know you had that the story had to keep going it had to have right. another twist had to have something to up the ante the next time there's not much with that you know it's kind of just unraveling a mystery slowly calmly right, right. um emotionally but the mystery's not the focus of the story it's just driving the story which i also think is honestly a really good way to make a mystery uh story like that should be more the focus is this is the the relationships a little bit more um i feel like we did talk about knives out earlier i feel like in in that movie it was very much about the mystery um Mm -hmm. which I really enjoyed that movie. I'm not gonna. Yeah, dock it's, it it's right the here. mystery and the characters' relationship makes the mystery more chaotic. Right, right. But I would but, like but to see fo- movies where the focus is more on the relationships mm-hmm. and let the audience, you know, pick up on the clues of the mystery and stuff. I think that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, the mystery is, you know, the the guy who's investigating the mystery, Sherlock. You know, he doesn't know even though he solved the mystery already even though he knows everything right because of his mental uh condition deteriorating you know we learned the mystery with him we we relearned you know as he as he relearns we learn right um 
and it's it's really it's really well told as you said in that in that uh respect yeah i i uh i i really just was very surprised about this movie because i remember hearing about it after we had decided to watch it actually not quite after we decided to watch it first when you said oh yeah there's a movie where ian mckellen plays sherlock holmes let's do that with these other two movies and i was like okay sure i was thinking because ian mckellen's been in the in the game for so long it was when he was a young man and uh it until it took me until i was looking up the movie and i was like this movie was in 2015 yeah uh i and i remember hearing about it back then but i totally forgot about it because i never heard anybody talk about it uh mm-hmm. after it came yeah, out i remember i remember when it came out you know people were like that was a good movie but nobody was like saying go see the movie right and i understand right. now you know it is it is a good movie it's not one of those even though i do recommend people see it i do too it's not one of those i say go out now and see you know it's not yeah i feel like it, people have when a, you have i feel like people have a hard time um suggesting movies that make them feel sad yeah uh, but and, i don't <laughs> <laughs> some of them are my favorite movies so of course you gotta uh you know request people mm-hmm. to go see it just you know give them a fair warning it's like it is sad but it's yeah there's good. a time and a place for it right yeah because right. it's like if you've if you've lost a grandparent recently like i lost my grandma last year it could be hard to yeah, watch this movie at I times could say because that. it's very fragile human being that you're watch who's again he's playing a 93 year old here and ian's not too far off from that i can't remember how old exactly ian is but but i mean it does it does remind you uh you know of age and of you know fragility in that regard um you know i mean so many people are living beyond their 90s now and that's you know great step for science but at the same time you you watch it and especially when they're talking about mental health loss like that's one of my biggest fears right is losing my mind um and here it's you know it's like seeing that in somebody who's had such a long life and now they're you know they can't remember names like that's one of the big parts of the movie is he has to make a dot in his notebook whenever he forgets his name yeah and like eventually he's putting like 30 dots a day on there yeah and i think it was anytime he he can't recollect something just anything Mm-hmm. he yeah. makes a dot but he does with the name he does put names on his sleeve yeah to help him remember people's yeah. names when he's talking to them right and i mean especially especially somebody who valued their intelligence so highly as sherlock holmes right you know crazy applause to this uh movie for you know going outside the box and thinking right well, what would sherlock be like in his 90s when he's losing that mind yeah i mean um, it must i would imagine it's his worst fear too um, right even if it's a subconscious fear it's like uh and, and like they actually happens yeah. yeah and they and they play off of his old drug issues with you know going to find the prickly ash he's so desperate right. to find to cure. stop his mental illness that he'll do whatever it takes to slow that down um it is based off of another novel uh one i might actually read um not to say i wouldn't read the enola holmes i just feel like they're probably geared for a more younger audience right than right right me so i probably wouldn't be as interested in them uh but it's based off the novel A Slight Trick of the Mind by Mitch Cullen. And oh, really? you know, I might I might pick that up soon yeah. because, you know whereas I could probably read about it a little better watching it is you know, it's it's not the saddest movie I've seen. I've seen much sadder oh, movies. Definitely, um, yeah. But emotionally like, Go ahead. I feel like at the end it's a very uplifting movie. But throughout you're very sad. <laughs> yeah yeah it is it is upsetting um not not upsetting you are right it it is uplifting Mm -hmm. um at the end but yeah it is it is sad at times to watch and you know as as we said just know that going in Um, also also know going in it's a simple movie it's not or a simple story it's not i mean there is a mystery and the mystery of course isn't simple yeah um but you know i i kept 
fooling myself with this movie thinking there was going to be a bigger twist coming around the corner like there was a moment where i thought uh and i'm just going to say that because it's not part of the plot and i don't want people going in thinking it's going to be because i think it's a better story not thinking about that kind of stuff sure um but there was a moment where i thought maybe he's not holmes at all actually maybe he is watson and that's why he's writing the story you know i was thinking that that was going to be a twist that would have been a hard twist to pull off (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I see. I think I think, though, that is interesting that you kept on looking for the twist, because I think Sherlock kept on looking for the twist. He was yeah. like, there has to be something. He was so sure that there had to be something. Mm-hmm. And there is. But there is. Uh, it's 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 not as devious as he thinks it is. I mean, as you said earlier, it's more about the relationships. Yes. And that's what the story is more focused on and i you know um i don't want to spoil things so i will say that like that is kind of you know i was looking more for a storytelling twist when i should have been looking for relationships you know yeah um so again very well done very well very respectful of the story too uh one thing that as a loyalist i didn't like was uh, the address 221B Baker Street is in his actual address. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they they do a thing where uh, he he's the real Sherlock Holmes, but all the novels actually exist in the world. Uh, yeah. So, which I mean, I think it's kind of written that uh, Doyle writes it that Watson is writing the story. Uh, yeah. But, so this is after that after there's a big fame well i think yeah i think um yeah because it's uh, sorry i interrupted you Um, no it's okay that's pretty much what i was gonna say yeah because it's you know watson's writing that as that watson is writing it like they're living at 221b baker street but like with guy Ritchie's uh sherlock holmes where he's hiding his face from the newspapers here they're hiding their actual lives right. pretty much from the world so that they can still live. Like nobody knows what Sherlock looks like or where he actually lives. Right. But he is a, you know, a famous player in the, the world of mystery at, you know, where in the world that this is going on in. Right. So huh. I do think it's interesting to talk about, um, I feel like the Japan part of it, mm-hmm. it, it might have been that they're trying to use it as like a, a red herring thing, but I thought that would play into the story a little bit more. Like yeah. in the end, it once again, it's a, it's a, it's about relationships, his relationship with the man that he was staying mm-hmm. with there, I think is the important part of it. Um, well, that and how he develops as a character with yes. that man at the end. At exactly. The end of the movie. Yes. Uh, Which I didn't like. No, you weren't a fan. I I thought it could have been different. Yeah, because I I really couldn't I think tell. It's cruel. I couldn't tell if he was lying or not. He was. Yeah, because okay. he. Um, I'm not gonna put a spoiler wall up. I will say skip forward thirty seconds. Cool. Um. Yeah he 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 says after he he writes a letter to the guy uh-huh. you know explaining who the guy's uh i won't say what it was but he writes a letter to the guy and then he later tells the kid it was my first work of fiction um you know as a character developing moment for him right he's, he's venturing into the world of fiction yeah and i didn't i didn't like it because it feels really cruel to lie to that character yes it um, also it does but it gave i think sherlock was just like this guy needs some closure and earlier in the movie with the woman mm-hmm. in gray he says i wish i would have lied to her i think it's been about 30 yeah. seconds <laughs> yeah well i mean we're yeah we're not spoiling now i say but no it's i don't know it is a cruel it, it felt cruel to me because it's like yes you're right the one character didn't get closure right. um but again it's just like you're lying to the character again kind of yeah yeah um you know it doesn't it doesn't seem right to me because i can imagine give it 10 years sherlock dies and that character finds out that sherlock lied to him then he's like well fuck my life's in chaos again you know it's like i don't 
I don't know what my past is yet again. Um, I know that's very hard to understand when we're not spoiling things, but I don't know. It just well, go watch like, the movie. Ha <laughs> Yeah, if it, if it, yeah, yeah, go watch the movie. Um, I say watch it when you're in a mindset for a sad movie, but not wanting to. Right. You know, you 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 haven't gone through a loss, especially. You know, I think if I had watched this last year, I would not have enjoyed it at all. Yeah, I think um, it would have been tough for me when my yeah, grandpa my grandma's passed. death was yeah, it's 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 a rough moment there. Uh, so especially if you're still you know if you're feeling those kind of losses recently, avoid this movie. I, I would, would say, say so. That's a good warning. Um, yeah, but it's you know a curious mystery, um, sad one. Yeah, good story. Uh, you know, decent performance. Uh, outside of Ian McKellen, Ian McKellen is amazing in this yes oh my god everyone else i would say everyone else is decent i think, I everyone, think everyone else, else is amazing. there to enhance ian's performance yeah and you know i think that is a detriment to the movie even though they're good they're not amazing and i do feel mm-hmm. like you know even though it's a simple story also i think it would have just been strengthened by a little bit more uh i don't know how to I don't know how to put it, but it, it would have been helped by a little bit more. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, do Laurie think Lenny that amazing. his uh, performance was a little bit more elevated than the rest of the cast. Um, I think they had more to bounce off of too. Yes, I'm gonna cut most of this part. You out. got <laughs> <laughs> you got you got some closing. Uh, and yeah, in closing, um, I give it three stars, same score as I gave Sherlock, but, uh, or Sherlock Holmes from Guy Ritchie, um, you know, good movie, sad movie, amazing performance by Ian McKellen, even though I don't like seeing, you know, him yeah. get hurt. I love the man too much to watch some of his pain he goes through sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's it's a great take. Um, again, I might read the novel just because of the movie. I kind of wish I'd read it first because I'm that kind of guy that likes to read the book first. Sure. Um, but you know, it's I, I recommend it. But again, just go into it with the warning that you know if if you if it's hard for you to watch older individuals age or like you know battle battle some of the consequences of age, then you know maybe uh, stay away. But yeah, I think it's it's worthwhile. Yeah, I would agree that it's worthwhile. In fact, I think it's very worthwhile. I really enjoyed and was very surprised by this movie. because of, I think because of the fact that nobody talked about it, I wasn't expecting too much. Um, but I should have known better because Ian McKellen always brings it. And he brought it. I mean, damn. Ah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he's playing someone slightly younger than himself and then someone older than himself. And I I think that he does a great job at both. Uh, And so for Ian McKellen's performance alone, you should watch this movie. But I think the story is very good. And the relationship between him and this little boy just like it just made me uh, appreciate times that I spent with my grandfather a little bit more. Uh, You know, I already appreciated them and now he's passed. But uh, it just highlighted that in my mind for an evening, and it was very nice. Uh, so I highly recommend this movie. And that that's I think that's a good point to make too, is that you have had that experience as a younger kid with an older individual. Yeah. Um, I mean, we had that with my grand, my brother and I had that with her grandma. Like we would go over to the house a lot too. But I wouldn't say like I connected right with my grandma over there. It was more just like a fun place to visit and you know something away from home. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like, I, I love my grandma and I loved hanging out there, but like, I don't remember like, you know, bonding with her in those ways, um, that are like presented here like this in this movie. Um, and my, both my grandparent or grandfathers died, uh, before my memory had kicked in. Right. So like, I don't, I don't remember any experiences like that. It wasn't until I was in college that I made, uh, friends who were, in their uh like 80s and 90s um so it's like as a younger man i have experiences with right you know 
these friendships and these bonds but as a younger kid like i don't you know i don't relate to roger in those in that manner i see yeah well maybe that would have uh kicked this movie over the edge for you but uh in that case can we talk about uh uh who, who's mate. coming back yeah the three yeah. mate that's coming back uh i guess i'll i think i'll go ahead and start if that's okay yeah um i I'm going to go with Mr. Holmes because I just, uh, I think, I, I think if it was the first time I had watched Sherlock Holmes, I might have a different opinion. Um, because the first time I watched it, I was like, man, I never thought Sherlock Holmes could, a uh, Sherlock Holmes movie could feel that way. Um, but I do think that for me, the blockbustery stuff has gotten a little old. Um, but still, hell of a lot of fun to watch and this one i just man the character work is just so good and uh it just feels a lot more uh like of an elevated art than the other two movies so for me uh mr holmes takes it Mm. i respect that i'm a blockbuster bitch (laughs) um (laughs) yeah i'm a blockbuster bitch and uh, i i put forth uh, sherlock holmes from guy ritchie um it's worth you know, it. I did like I did like uh Mr. Holmes. I think it's a good movie. Um I think there's things missing from it. Mm-hmm. You know, I think there's a little, you know, it needs more of a drive in my opinion. It need I mean the drive's good, uh but it, it's such a hard watch because of the content on display that it needs something a little more to get me invested in it because there's so many moments where I'm like this is so hard. I want to go to my phone. Um, you know, it's causing me anxiety to watch. I mean, not really, but you know what I mean? Like it was, it was a struggle to watch that I had to, I had to put something between me and it at times Mm -hmm. because I didn't like seeing Ian McKellen get hurt. It was, you know, it's just, it it was hard for me to connect because of that. Um, I see. Whereas, you know, with Guy Ritchie again, you know, as a lover of the literary character, I feel like they put so much focus on details and loyalty. Like, I mean, of course they you know alter their adaptation sure um for their own benefit but it's such a perfect take on it in my opinion that you know i I put it forth as the victor yeah um and and i was biased going in so you know take that into effect i was very (laughs) very biased yeah i thought i because i hadn't heard heard anything about mr holmes that i was gonna it was gonna be sherlock holmes for me as well but Mm -hmm. uh yeah i just think that uh it was a very good experience watching mr holmes i i don't think that they'll have a uh sherlock holmes movie that's ever like that again i don't I like no. never again i don't think so it's Probably definitely not, worth watching it for that reason yeah especially since it didn't it didn't get much uh buzz yeah you know yeah because of that they're gonna keep doing the blockbustery. um the younger actors and like the you know tell the main tales right i mean that said that said i am excited for sherlock holmes 3 i am uh, too because i've been waiting he was iron yeah, man long enough <laughs> yeah exactly i mean i love him as iron man he, i do too yeah, there you did good but god i love him as sherlock holmes it's such a good character yeah. for him oh that was something i wanted to mention about this uh these trio is that he is the only american sherlock right mm-hmm out of, uh, out of the three yeah um so we know but his accent's on on point yeah it's very on point i mean he he, he does really good accent work i haven't seen dr doolittle but oh, God. i haven't heard great things i just want to ask you about particularly the accent work at least is that at least there no <laughs> i don't i don't remember it being there at all man it's i remember it being very shoddy uh we'll (sighs) talk do a little someday someday uh i have a plan for it you do there's no there's no way it's going to be knocked off of that plan either oh my god Um, yeah it i won't spoil what the plan is um but yeah it's it'll be fun (laughs) <laughs> but yeah he is uh, <laughs> but he is the only american well, one here it. and um i think he did 
I want to say it was a Charlie Chaplin movie or something that yeah that, yes. I think he, he credits very good yeah, in that. I think he credits that, that just movie called for Chaplin. perfecting his accent um yeah cuz he's you know you yeah, want to know did that a very he's good job american in my opinion and sherlock and i'm not uh, a language expert either no but he's also playing an english person surrounded by americans because chaplin was in america was in america for most of his life uh at yeah. least during his movie career and and in this he's surrounded no. by english yeah, he's, people he's, and he doesn't stick out yeah, really great so here. good work um but yeah i think that's yeah. that's been our threesome uh we we differed again we did we did we'll have to you know we'll have to figure out something what to do with these winners yeah. and these ties to tie break but anyways um mm-hmm. yeah i think that does it for our program thanks this, for listening uh, this uh, eve like share um, comment subscribe yeah do all the fun things yeah uh, tell your friends if you'd like uh, uh, I hope you enjoy and safe travels Green and Faceless on the Couch is a proud production of Fiction Works 19 we plan to publish new episodes of this podcast every Thursday evening if you'd like to give us a comment please visit us at facebook.com slash green and faceless there you'll find many links to our show and to our website Thanks for listening.